The sliding resistance in a retaining wall depends on the friction between the soil and the base of the wall, and also depends on the passive pressure against the front soil. But the calculation of the passive pressure is affected by several external factors. Are you calculating the passive pressure correctly? Let's check it out. This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss how to calculate the passive pressure in, in a retaining wall. Let's get started. When the retaining wall pushes laterally against the front soil, this soil is forced to develop the maximum shear strength. This is called the passive pressure. Graphically, you can see here, this circle here represents the active state, which occurs when uh, the soil pushes against the wall, the backfield, and uh, compared to the passive pressure is much smaller. But when the wall pushes against the soil at the front, what is developed is the passive state, which is this big circle here. And this is the maximum capacity in shear that the soil develops. So the development of this force is very important to resist uh, the sliding of the wall. The passive pressure can be represented by a, a passive coefficient, Kp, which depends in terms of the angle of internal friction of the soil for uh, granular soils. So this is a property of the soil. Kp is very important because it's a parameter that we use to calculate the passive uh, pressure and the passive resistance of the soil. Basically, the passive pressure has a triangular diagram, zero at the very top of the soil level, and a maximum uh, pressure at the bottom of the diagram. In the absence of any water table, this is just a perfect triangle where the maximum pressure occurs at the bottom is and is equal to the height times uh, the density of the soil and uh, times Kp. But in the presence of water, this is completely different. In particular, because the water reduces the shear capacity and affects the calculation of the passive uh, pressure and the passive resistance. So the maximum pressure at the bottom would be the water diagram plus this triangle which represents the submerged density of the soil times the height of this portion and uh, times Kp. Ignoring the effect of the water will uh, produce uh, unconservative results all the time. Another factor that affects the calculation of the passive pressure is that a portion of the soil in front of the wall has been disturbed during construction or after the construction of the wall. So this portion at the top of the diagram can be ignored because it's uh, incapable to, to develop the, the shear capacity. I have prepared an, an example uh, to demonstrate these two factors in the calculation of the passive pressure. This is a cantilever retaining wall which is 17 feet high and uh, the backfill is level without any slope. In this case, we have considered that the water table is at the, uh, at the same elevation of the front soil, so the complete passive uh, diagram is affected by the, by the water table, which is the worst case. In this case, the sliding has been just 1.51, more than 1.50, which is passing is okay, it's acceptable. Now, if we ignore the top portion of the diagram, we go to the materials, bearing soil. Here, the depth to neglect passive now is zero. But if we consider, for example, one foot, we're gonna see what happens with the sliding safety factor. If we put here one foot, then the sliding you know, reduce a little bit and now is not passing. If we reduce a little bit more, say two feet, just to be at the top of the of the footing, with two feet, you know, we are ignoring this triangle at the top of the diagram 
and this sliding safety factor is now 1.45. If now we move the water table, let's go to the loads and the water table height is, is just there. The water table is measured from the bottom of the footing up. So now we are assuming that it's four feet from the bottom to the water table. This is four feet. Let's say that we reduce the water table to three and let's see what is the effect on the sliding. Let's change this to three. So the sliding changed to 1.4054. So it's a big increase. It would reduce even more the water table, two feet. And the sliding safety factor increased even more. So you can see that the water table is very important in the calculation of the passive pressure. The passive pressure calculation is very sensitive to the water because it reduces the, uh, the, the shear capacity of the soil as demonstrated in the in the diagram that we previously saw. If we go farther and we say that the water table is zero, so the water table is just at the bottom of the of the footing, you see the sliding is 1.81. So it changed a lot. It's, uh, a big big change when we consider or not consider the water table so we have demonstrated two things we have demonstrated that the water table is very important in the calculation of the passive pressure and also we have demonstrated that the uh, ignoring the top portion of the diagram is also affecting the calculation of the passive resistance as you can see as the britain considers all these effects uh, they are included in the software and the calculations reflect all these numbers. Here in the sliding calculations, we are checking here the passive force is being uh, calculated. And uh, you know the program considers all these effects. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of more videos like this. Thank you for your attention. We'll see you next time.